Hey guys, welcome back. Today I want to talk about something more of a fun topic, and that is the topic of superheroes. Mainly, a question I had growing up as a kid and in early teens was like, how come we don't see any superheroes in real life? You know, we grew up with comic books and Superman and Batman, and of course the Marvel Universe is extremely hot right now, but it's like, why don't we see superheroes like that? So today we're going to explore this topic and analyze just what would it take to become a real life superhero. So before we get started on this, I want to first define the context of what we're talking about here. Now when I say superhero, I am talking about the capes, the spandex, you see in the comic books, you see in the movies. Obviously, you know, soldiers, cops, doctors, nurses, firefighters, they are the real heroes. They put their lives on the line every day for people. So I kind of want to draw that line right now as those are your everyday typical heroes. Those people are true heroes. In the context of what we're talking about here is the term superhero that we read about and is glamorized, especially in the martial arts, since martial arts usually goes hand in hand with crime fighting. So that's what we're going to talk about and cover today. So that being said is, where are all the crime fighters? Well, first, let's eliminate the obvious ones. People don't have superpowers. You know, none of us are bulletproof. We don't fly. We can't run the speed of sound. So we're going to stick to more of the humans with skills side of things. You know, you got your Punishers, you've got your Batman. Where are they? People are like that. First of all, let's answer the question right away. Why don't we see the superheroes? Mainly because the concept itself really doesn't work. It takes it's easy to draw someone in the cape fighting crime on the pages of a book. Doing it in real life is a much different approach and it's a lot harder. We've talked about this in other videos too. First of all, costumes. Costumes are so hard to get right. And honestly, they're hard to take seriously. You see somebody out running around the streets in a costume, what's your first assumption? That guy's either in it for the kicks or he's nuts. So aside from being taken seriously, and it's really hard to be taken seriously if you're trying to be a superhero, a crime fighter in a costume. But you also need skills because there's more to fighting crime than just beating people up. For one, legality. You know, there's a, a lot of lines that are blurred in TVs, movies, and comic books when it comes to the law and crime fighting. One, one, you got curfew. Some areas have curfew, so if you're even out past that, you're breaking the law. Then there's trespassing, harassment, assault. If you go beat somebody up because you think they're committing a crime, you can get charged with assault. Maybe also even obstruction if you get in the way of another of a police officer trying to do their work. If you want to be a vigilante, that's technically illegal. Taking the law into your own hands and enacting what you feel is justice is against the law. Two, it's incredibly dangerous. So it's one thing to want to inspire people, maybe clean up a neighborhood and lead some foundations or charity work. It's another thing to walk up to a drug dealer on the street corner in a bad neighborhood and say, hey, get out of here, evildoer. And unfortunately, I bring this up because it sounds silly, like why would anybody do that? I've unfortunately seen a lot of documentation of people doing that. There are people out there who do try to be superheroes. So, you know, we're talking about how the concept doesn't work. Doesn't mean people don't try. You can look online. All you have to do is Google real life superhero and you're going to find a plethora of people who are trying this and like, and you're going to find out what I mean by how hard it is to be taken seriously in some of these costumes. Now people might also ask, why well, don't I want to be necessarily a crime fighter, but I want to save people from accidents and help people. That's great. That's admirable. But my advice to you is if your goal is to run into a burning building and pull someone out that's hurt, join the fire department. Get the proper training and the proper equipment. The only costume you should be wearing in situations like that is flame retardant and a helmet with a hose. And most importantly, let's, let's look at the whole concept of superheroes. Theatrics. Theatrics, theater, is made for entertainment. Comic books, superheroes are entertaining to us because they kind of play and they glamorize values that we have. We want to see justice served. We want to see good prevail. But let's separate this into drama and then trauma. Batman beating up the Joker is drama. It's exciting. It's fun. A cop beating up or shooting a suspect is trauma. That's not fun to watch. Would you let your kid watch that? You know, uh, you know, most parents will let Batman watch a kid watch Batman beat up the Joker. But would you let your kid watch a horrible video of somebody getting shot in real life? No, because it's not made for entertainment. It's not fun. And honestly, if you find it entertaining, then please go find another channel to watch because that's not what we that's not what we promote here. There is a big difference between what works in theatrics and what works in real life. And that's just the hard truth about that. OK, so now that I've poo pooed all over the topic so far about that, let's talk about where the concept can work. Can you be a superhero in real life? Well, that depends on your objective. Let's look at someone like Batman, since we talked about Batman a bit. What is Batman? He, what was his goal? Was to become a symbol. There's a lot of ways to become a symbol. And if you want to go the superhero route, 
There's a lot of people who do go to children's hospitals in superhero costumes. Yeah, you're not out there fighting crime, but you're being a hero in that moment to that child. So if you really have the urge to patrol the streets at night, do it safely with people, neighborhood watch group, and call the authorities when something happens. Don't just go running in there, guns ablazing or, or fists flying, just, you know, you, you wanna be the next Batman. So be smart about that. So as I mentioned earlier, if you Google the term real life superheroes, you're gonna find some really interesting websites out there. But that being said is th there have been some notable attempts. The first one I ever encountered, which is kind of funny, because when I asked myself this question years back, why aren't there any real life superheroes? And I actually Googled the name real life superhero and I found a guy named Angle Grinder Man. And I'm like, what the heck is this? Angle Grinder Man looks ridiculous. He wears the blue tights, the gold shorts, the gold boots, the mask and all that. But basically, he calls himself a social activist and he's over in the UK or was, I don't believe he practices anymore, but they had a problem out there with the corruption with like parking enforcement and, and you know, a company, a private company putting boots on cars. So he offered the services of if your boot, a boot was put in your car and you felt it was unlawful, call him. And he came out there with an angle grinder and he cut it off. But again, we've crossed the line of legality. You know, he's taking that risk. If he gets caught, he goes to jail. But I just thought that, huh, and that actually kind of started me down the rabbit hole of researching the real life superheroes. Cause I'm like, if he's doing something like this, who else is out there? Another notable attempt worth mentioning is Captain Jackson out of Jackson, Michigan. Now on first appearance, you look at him and he kind of looks like the poor man's version of the Adam West Batman. But the truth is, he actually took the approach of more of a community service. He did neighborhood watches. He went to fundraising events. He tried to be the symbol of good. And yeah, he wasn't scaling buildings and beating people up, but he was at least trying to make a difference in his neighborhood and in his city. So, and he got some notable attention for that. Then we also have Super Barrio. And this is the example of I'm talking about being more of a symbol than being a crime fighter. He supports protests to try to bring uh, better conditions, working conditions to poor Mexican workers. So his mission is that he goes out there as a symbol to bring attention to the cause. He's not fighting crime, but he's still trying to do something good with being a symbol. Then we have Terrifica, much smaller scale. Her mission was to cruise the bar scenes of New York City and she looked out for women who might have had too much to drink and were in danger of being taken advantage of by men, you know, watching out, making sure drinks weren't spiked. Again, smaller scale, still admirable. Her, you know, the costume may not really do much for her cause, but at least she was trying to do some good with it. Not gonna make it to the cover of a comic book, but hey, she put the effort out there. Then we have Polar Man, and his main objective is he goes around and he shovels the snow off of elderly sidewalks and driveways, so he actually, <laughs> anyone who lives up north in the snow will actually deem him a superhero. He also tries to inspire children, do charity causes, and he also does neighborhood patrol just to be a security lookout. So as you can see, there's a lot of people out there trying to do good, but they're a far cry from ending up in the MCU anytime soon. And now we come to the fun one. This is, um, in all my research, the closest I have found to an individual becoming a real life superhero, or I believe as close as one can become to becoming a real life superhero. And that is a guy by the name of Phoenix Jones. The reason he's such uh, a, an interest to me is his story, how he developed, what he does, his approach to stuff, the mistakes that he learned from. So just to kind of recap, Phoenix Jones, his real name is Ben Fodor, and he was an amateur MMA fighter with an actually impressive record, 15 to two. So he's a great fighter. He lives in Seattle, Washington, and basically his story is he got tired of seeing people do bad things. He had a lot of experience fighting growing up. He was a Taekwondo champion, you know, MMA fighter. He also claimed that he's a, he's a bowling champion. And he says, you'd be surprised how many fights you get into in the parking lot. And he found that he had good fighting skills and his area, you know, he's got a lot of crime in his area. And he told the story how one time he was walking to his car with his young boy, his car had been broken into, his boy slipped, fell, cut himself in the glass. And he's like, you know what? I've had enough of this. I need to make a change. So Ben Fodor had the fighting skills to back up his idea of being a superhero. He was in great physical fitness. He was young, he was in his early 20s. So he made the choice to go out there and become a symbol of hope for a city. And he thought that if he could stop people behaving badly, that people would learn not to behave badly. And we'll get back to that in, in a little bit. What I find interesting though is for one, at this point in time, Phoenix Jones has been doing this about 10 years now. Let's let, let that sink in, 10 years. And he's still alive, which accounts for some skill on his part. But what I find interesting was the limits that he hit. Everything we talked about up to this point, he encountered. He thought, oh, I'm gonna scale the rooftops. I'm gonna swoop in and stop a crime. I'm gonna be able to go and find a crime around any corner. I'm gonna wear my super costume. He tried all that. 
And he actually, I'm going to recommend um, a podcast. And also, I'm going to show some quick clips. There's a, if you Google his name, you're going to find a ton of stuff online. I'll show you some quick clips and pictures, but I'm going to put a bunch of links in the description to watch more videos. There's a, there's a lot to look at here. And I recently heard and listened to a, a really interesting podcast by the NW Nerd. Links in the description below. It's an hour long interview with him, and it's fascinating. It really, it's really worth a listen. He talks about his whole life mission. He's kind of jaded at this point, which we're going to get back to. But he talks about his motivation at the beginning to where he became now, and it's it's really fascinating. So he describes that he actually wore this really cheap tuxedo that was that he could tear away, and he had a horrible costume underneath it. He describes it as a Count Chocula type costume. He would climb the rooftops and. And he would sit there on the fire escape and wait and watch and nothing happened and nothing happened he says it took a couple weeks before finally there actually was a mugging taking place he goes all right this is my chance i'm going to swoop in by the time he took his costume off he got tangled up in the suit he tried to take the tuxedo off he goes it took him five minutes to climb down the fire escape by the time he got there the woman was like well the guy already left what the hell are you wearing so he realized, oh, that doesn't work. The guy got away. He even tried to chase him down. He, the guy got away. It didn't work. So he's like, all right, the rooftop thing is out. Then he did this patrol for a while with this costume and people made fun of him. Cause again, you can't take someone serious that's running around in a costume that looks like that. You know, millions of dollars go into the movies to make these costumes look good. Most people don't have that resources unless you're a professional cosplayer. And even then the costumes aren't practical. He said he even tried making a net gun and it didn't work. He got tangled up in it. He did the secret identity thing for a while. And all, like everything we just talked about why a superhero doesn't work, he tried that and it didn't work. But what I give him credit though was he tried to find a solution around that. So he started to identify the practicality of what he could do and, and what he wanted to do. And he describes his first actual criminal encounter, this successful one that he calls, was he encountered a woman who was being mugged and there he is in this cheesy suit. He walked up to the guy and he actually says, he goes, I said, stop evil doer. The guy turned around and stabbed him in the stomach. Hard hit of reality right there. And again, talk about how dangerous this is. You're gonna go encounter people who are dangerous criminals, you're gonna get hurt. Um, he was able to fight the guy off. The police came, they arrested him. And despite being stabbed, he said he felt motivated, but he realized, what am I doing? I am not protected. So he kind of ditched the cheesy costume and he went for something a little bit more protective. And he spent a lot of money and he traveled. And he actually developed the suit that, you know, his, his trademark suit now, which actually kind of looks like something out of a comic book, but it has armor built into it for, you know, stab proofing. I don't know if it's bulletproofing or not or resistant, but he started, every time he made a mistake, he learned from it and he added that layer of protection or he added that tactic and he just kind of built from there. And again, over the past 10 years, he's been adding to this experience. Now, how did I find out about him? This is what's kind of funny. I was actually sitting on the phone one day, just kind of waiting in line. I'm scrolling through the phone and I see a headline that says real life superhero identity revealed. I'm like, what? What happened was he was patrolling and the one smart thing that he does is he wears a camera and he's always recording everything he encounters. So apparently he found a, a fight um, happening in the outside of a club and there were a bunch of people in the big brawl. He went out there trying to break it up. He claims he was attacked. He pulled out pepper spray, sprayed one guy. The mist got around, other people were sprayed. A woman started attacking him. It became this big issue. The cops came, people were arrested. He was arrested because they, they, they tried to accuse him of assault. He went to court. And basically what happened was in the courtroom, the judge said, you're gonna have to reveal your identity. You know, you're gonna have to take your mask off here. And charges were dropped because the video proved that he, he was not guilty of assault. But that day he walked out of the courthouse with his lawyer and something you'd see out of a comic book movie. He walked right up to a podium, surrounded by press, said, okay, I am Phoenix Jones, but in real life, I am Ben Fodor. And in the dramatic Batman move, he took his mask and he pulled it off and he revealed his identity because it was gonna come out anyway. But he wanted, he made the theatrics out of it. And from that point in time, you know, he became a media sensation. I, you know, I'm in South Florida, this guy's in Seattle. Washington, you know, you can't get any further apart in this country. And here I am all getting all these articles about him. So I started to research him. And over this time, he got big, big. He became larger than life. He became that symbol, at least to some degree. He's got photo shoots with him on the rooftops. They did documentaries about him. They made comic books about him. He's got a theme song even, which is really bizarre. And he started to use that status for what he felt was his own good. So he started what was called the Rain City Superhero Movement. And what that was is he gathered other people like-minded to do community patrols. And when they found a situation, they engaged. He did more research and effort and his group was trying to be a little bit more proactive and less vigilante. Like he's actually against the whole idea of being a vigilante. He's very much about working within the law. At the time, he had a wife named Purple Rain 
she was a victim of spousal abuse, so she had her own movement going for women in abusive relationships. So he put together this team effort. And when he was asked, well, did you guys just go run around the streets looking for crime? He goes, no, he goes, we had to be smart about it. He goes, he learned before, you don't just sit in the rooftop and wait for a crime to happen. He goes, first they eliminated the crimes they can do nothing about, the bigger stuff, you know, you know, bank robbers and all that. He's not gonna go run into a bank robbery and even trying to find that. He goes, we had to eliminate what was practical. Then he goes, things like breaking and into a house. If someone's house is getting robbed, he goes, well, I'm not gonna go break into the house as well. And then, you know, possibly get caught by police or, or you know, get shot by the homeowner. He goes, we tried to be more practical. So what they did though was, they worked with community people, they set up surveillance, they would know any, they would listen to police scanners, they would know any suspicious activity, so they would narrow down likelihood and scenarios, and if something happened, then they would engage. And by engaging, they called the police. First and foremost, they'd call the cops, and they would try to keep the situation stable, so if it was a fight, they tried to keep the people separated, they tried to keep things calm until the cops could get there. And then when the cops got there, he would give them whatever footage he had. The cops didn't like him very much at first, and there's still probably some that don't, because in their minds, here's some guy in injecting himself in situations he had no business being in. And for the longest time, you saw the cops, that the police chief was outspoken against them, they were discouraging it. But over time, you saw that they were starting to work with them a little bit. They kind of, they had some team efforts in place. So again, an interesting evolution to his story. So going back to the podcast, they asked him, why didn't he just become a cop if he wanted to fight crime? He felt, he felt that sometimes cops do get special privileges and he disagreed with that. But that being said, he goes, I have no authority. He goes, here I am showing up to a situation that I have no business being in. I have no authority to be there, so I have to find a reason to have the authority to be there. So he does everything by the law. And here's where I think he was really smart. He studied the law. He, I mean, with a fine tooth comb, he went through his state's laws to know what he can and can't do. For example, he said, with, with, if you see a man abusing his wife, you can't go up and attack the man. That's assault. What you can do is you can step in between him and her, and if he swings at you, well, now it's self-defense. There's little things like that that he had to know to make sure he stayed within the letter of the law. In his state, they have a law called mutual combat, and that law states that with a cop present, two people, two consenting adults, can actually have a fist fight as long as the cop agrees to it, and a few people agree to it, and the, cop, and the fight stops, the second one person is either get, gives up or goes to the ground. So, and there's actually a famous one that he was involved in. There were a bunch of, there were two guys who were harassing cars, they were throwing stuff in the street. He showed up, tried to tell them to stop. They got really, really aggressive. The cops showed up, and the guy started you know, making threats, challenged him, actually accused, said, I'm, threatened him, goes, I'm gonna go follow you to your home. Phoenix Jones didn't like that. The guy challenged him to a fight. The cop approved of it. So the two of them, they actually had a fight right there. There's footage of it on YouTube. You search uh, Phoenix Jones mutual combat and you'll find it. The second the fight starts and Phoenix Jones throws those, those leg checks, you can see his MMA skills, you knew the guy made a mistake. Fight didn't last long, guy went down. But in the end, he still followed the letter of the law and he gives the cops the footage and he claimed that he has claimed that he has been sued 27 times. He says, 27 times I've had to, you know, uh, cops show up and I have to prove why I'm innocent. Then he goes to the court and has to tell the judge why he's innocent. And when these lawsuits happen, he has to prove why he's innocent. He has actually not been charged, or he has not been actually uh, convicted of a crime. He's been, he won all 27 of those lawsuits and he credits that with understanding what he is allowed to do and not overstepping that boundary. His, his idea was, he goes, if I'm gonna become a symbol, I have to show what a citizen can do within the law itself. Use the law, not skirt the law. But as he became more popular and bigger, he actually had sponsors. I know one company came in and they actually gave him a shield, a ballistic shield that he carries around. He's also changed his costume. He doesn't. He used to have like this, this like Batman type cowl, like without the ears. Now he wears more of a ballistic helmet. So his costume has gotten more practical over time. It's really more security and safety based and it allowed better vision than what it was more theatrical before. During this time, he went back to his MMA fighting and went pro. And professionally, he's 11 and three and in the draw. So that's still a pretty good record. And if you look up Flat Top, he went by the name Flat Top, you can find footage of him fighting there. There's no doubt, this guy is a good martial artist and he has the fighting skills to back it up. But all that being said, does he actually fit the bill? Would you consider him a superhero? I mean, he's got the costume, he's a skillful martial artist, he fights crime, he does a bunch of community service, you know, there's comic books, there's theme songs, so what exactly is he missing? Why is he not the superhero that we know the superheroes to be? Supervillains. Supervillains, like in the comic books, don't exist. It's about theatrics. The supervillains today, honestly, a real-life supervillain, 
you know, are political, they're mafia, they're big end business, nothing you're gonna punch. You cannot stop a mob by strapping one of their dealers to a, to a spotlight and shining a shadow in the sky. That's not real life. But we all explain that we don't have the jokers out there. Well, one guy tried. He actually had a super villain uh, try to, he released a whole bunch of propaganda, a guy by the name of Rex Velvet. He released ads and he released posters all over the city about how Phoenix Jones is no good. He must be soft and the city needed a proper villain. In the end, it was nothing but smoke. It was theatrics. But you have to ask, you know, like I said, you, it's hard to be taken seriously when you go this route. So he had people like this come out trying to be the counter symbol. It was lame and it got silly, but this is what happens when you enact in theatrics. The biggest thing that's missing is fulfillment. When you listen to this podcast and you compare it to like when you read or you watch early interviews with him at the beginning when he started, he was super motivated. He was super energetic. He had a mission. You hear him now and he sounds defeated. He's been doing this for 10 years and he says he's not seen the change that he wanted to see in people. He goes, I was supposed to show them a better way. He goes, people were supposed to get better. He goes, they're not getting better. He thought that if you beat up bad guys, you know, in his youth, if you beat up bad guys, the people stop doing bad things. But the real world doesn't work that way. Violence begets violence. If you go out there punching people for justice, you just can create more violence. You don't inspire people by running around at night beating other people up. You know, you're not gonna stop a bully because you beat him up. They're just gonna go, the worst they're gonna do is they're gonna go to a different corner and pick on somebody else and not you. You have to get to the root of problems. And that's what he's starting to realize. So basically systemic problems require systemic changes if you really wanna make a difference. You gotta to go to the root of the problem. It's like if someone has a cut and you keep giving them Band-Aids, uh, that's good, you're helping, literally putting the Band-Aid on the wound, but you gotta find out well, what's cutting them to begin with and maybe removing that hazard. It's, it's not, any, it's easy, you're said and done, and it's easy to say, oh, we just gotta make a systemic change. It takes a lot of work, it takes effort, it takes a lot of people, not a person in a suit to do that kind of a change. So in the end, as cool as I think Phoenix Jones is, he's starting to hit these real life limits of what we were talking about before and why we don't see real life superheroes. And since we use Batman as an example, this is actually interesting, uh, White Bell Zack and I got into this little discussion. I said that, well, the Bruce Wayne's don't change the world, but the Tony Starks do. And he said, actually, it's not the Tony Starks, it's the Thomas Waynes. Because Tony Stark, you know, he did a lot of philanthropy. He did his, he put his money to good work, but then again, he also went around in a suit and fought monsters and crimes. So, but Thomas Wayne just used his influence and his money and he built society up. He did homeless programs, he did food programs, he did support. He started to clean up Gotham City. You got your Bill Gates or that kind of, you have a billionaire out there that wants to do good. In real life, they're not gonna build a robot suit to go fight crime, but they might build a robot to go into debris and rubble and find survivors. But I do disagree with Phoenix Jones about one thing. He says people can't change and you can't make a difference and you can't be a symbol. I do disagree with that. You can inspire, you can become a symbol. Maybe he didn't pull the city out of despair, but maybe he made a difference to some of the individuals. Um, even if it meant one person got to go home to the family that night, he made a difference on some level. And you can inspire, you can be out there to help people because people do it all the time. I'm sorry, it doesn't mean you wear a cape and it doesn't mean you go drive around in a cool car and a motorcycle, beat up bad guys, but that's not real life. You can still connect with people, you can still help people, even in the martial arts. And if he feels like he didn't make a difference, well, what are we doing right now? You know, 10 years later, we're here talking about it. He did something. He, if anything, he brought some issues to the surface to talk about. So yes, I would argue that he did make a difference. Might not be the difference that he wanted, but he made some sort of impact. So now you ask yourself, how can you help? If you wanna help, if you wanna be a symbol, you wanna help your community, what can you do? What's in your power? For example, are you really good at sales? Are you a salesman? Well, maybe you can raise charity, you know, raise charity money and donate to causes. You go, sites like GoFundMe.com, there's people out there who have medical expenses or have family issues, people with handicapped children, raise funds. You can make a big difference in someone's life by just even covering that. That's, that could be life changing. Do you, are you part of a big network? Maybe you can hold community events. Also, there's a website I found they're, we're not affiliated in any way. I just I just like the concept behind it. It's called do something.org. If you want to do something in your community, just go to this website and there's a whole bunch of ideas there that say, okay, maybe you can help this event or maybe, you know, there's causes for, for poverty, for education, for mental health, even like something as like simple as running a book drive to donate to a school. There's a whole list of things that if you really want to do something to help, there's a lot of ideas there. So I recommend checking that out and I'll have a link for that below in the description as well. So honestly, to sum it all up, no matter how old you are, your age, race, health, your skills, you could be your hero to somebody out there. It just might not be in a costume. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and join us on Patreon. You know, our, our personal goal here on the channel, our objective when we started this channel was to make a positive difference by not showing the negative side of martial arts and, and trying to be positive and educating and sharing ideas. And that's and something we still strive to do. And I'd also like to hear your ideas. What do you guys suggest that can go out there and make a difference? Any causes or, or foundations that people should know about? Please feel free to share below. I would love to hear from you all. Thank you so much.